Hey guys, what's going on? I hope you are doing well. Yeah, sorry I skipped yesterday in regards to technical analysis. I wasn't feeling too hot. I felt kind of sick. Um, yeah, I wasn't really sleeping too well, frankly, but uh, yeah, I feel a lot better today. Okay, so I'm going to get into the daily chart here really quick. I'm going to go to market cipher. So I'm going to move it to the Heikinoshi version of it. So as you can see, we did kind of have like a little bit of a fake out pump right here because it went from green a little bit. Now we're going back down. So in regards to expansion of the red to the downside, I don't necessarily expect this uh, to completely just dump to the downside, but I do feel that this is more so a consolidation phase as to a pump phase. We can talk about ranges in a little bit, but yeah, just to be warned that we did have a pump and people are getting excited about the pump but this could potentially be a trap just to let you know regarding the daily chart on market cipher but I will say on a, as a caveat on the daily Heikinashi candle we do have a wick to the upside usually wicks on the top uh, usually mean indecision or weakness as you can see when trends are strong they, uh, Heikinashi candles have flat tops. We have flat top, flat top, flat top, flat top, flat top. Now we have the first wick to the upside. So this could indicate a consolidation phase. All right. So, uh, I'm going to go to the TSI. TSI here, same thing with the TSI. Uh, the overall trend is still to the downside because a slow moving indicator right here is still pointing down. It is still red. We haven't had an attempt at pushing this to the upside. Now, keep in mind, we did, um, well, I guess regarding the daily, you don't necessarily need to be all the way down here for a reset, or at least for a new pump. But keep in mind, if it does reverse or try to reverse, we could see instances where it pumps to the upside and then just ultimately gets rejected. Something like here, you know, something like here where it's green, then it goes gray, then it goes green, then it goes gray. You know, it can get very, very choppy. So um, I guess fair warning is if there is a pump and reversal uh, in this range, I'm just going to say it's just going to be very, very choppy. So please, uh, you know, this is a financial advice, but like watch out for too much leverage. Watch out for um, really like a revert, like an immediate reversal to the, you know, contrary of your decision. Um, so right now it's more so in a, we're more so range bound uh, at this time. And the TSI is a, uh, and, and and the and the market cipher indicator are, are showing both so i don't know if you just saw it recently but we saw a, a little green dot flash oh sorry this is the daily <laughs> i'm sorry i wanted to go to the daily chart okay so this is the uh oh this is also ethereum hold on <laughs> sorry i've been trading ethereum lately um and yeah so um I'm not really trading Bitcoin, but I use Bitcoin as my barometer basically for everything that I trade. I do technical analysis on Bitcoin and then on my personal time, I'll then, you know, go into my altcoin of choice to then trade, uh, you know, with the back in the back of my head of like what Bitcoin is doing. All right. Anyway, so from uh, Bitcoin's daily perspective, funny enough, we are actually getting a waning momentum to the downside because as you can see, the histogram went from red to yellow. Uh, usually that leads to some stuff like this, but now there are, you know, choppy attempts also here, for example. So uh, it's not necessarily uh, going to be a clean cut, if you will. Uh, we can probably go deeper into the intraday and kind of get a better perspective. But actually looking at this, uh, given that the MACD is below the zero line, I, you know, there was an effective and successful cross down to the zero line, so I can't necessarily be completely bullish, but as you can see, we are seeing a dichotomy here. We are seeing the MACD point to the downside, but we're seeing the histograms point to the upside, so also validating a chop zone potential. Uh, also, the TSI is, you know, still leading bearish, so as long as the TSI I'm sorry, as long as price is above 22,000, I'm sorry, as long as price is below 22.2K, <laughs> um, yeah, we can expect prices to go to the downside. So 22.2, where would that be on our chart? I'm going to turn this white, I'm going to turn this solid, and make this thicker, and I'm going to put 22.2. I think it was like 22.23. Uh, I should I should really put exact numbers right? Ah, oh, did it delete? Okay, what is going on here? There you go, jeepers! What? Ah, oh, okay. I guess I just not even really. There you go. Oh.
frustrating. <laughs> All right, there you go. Um, that is it, 23, or 22239, there you go. All right, there it is. So essentially where the 618 uh, is, so usually when the 618 is lost as support, price will eventually come up and potentially back test it. So this is basically the line in the sand here. Price could theoretically pump another like 3% all the way up to the 618, but if it gets rejected here, uh, which I ultimately, not going to lie, is a high probability given that there are zones. Oh, keep in mind, uh, there is this green line here that I'm actually going to delete. It was support here, but then it broke through. Goodness gracious, this was a few. Honestly, probably the, the best short that I've done in a while. Uh, when I saw this breakout, um, I just knew that we were going to continue the downside. Because look, it finally happened, y'all. Uh, this completely broke down now the 382 you can consider it as support because it te technically hasn't gotten tagged uh but yeah from the daily perspective we broke out of this um this channel finally and i've been talking about this channel uh for for s like months yeah 64 no we, we broke out basically like 60 on the 67th day we finally broke down on this i was kind of hoping for a break to the upside but there was a rejection um you know off basically uh 24.2 uh roughly on the, on the daily perspective like every single day um i basically my my bullish indicator was like if we had a daily candle close above basically you know 25,000, right which is a psychological number uh, that that usually is a good sign but we were just unable to uh, we did create like this wick top, which gave me a better indication of these um, right here. This is the um, this is the um, uh, uh, Fibonacci extension, right? It's a retrace. Usually, it's very helpful in regards to finding keys, support, and resistance zones. And there's just a lot of confluence, so I like I like using this and keeping it here on the daily perspective once it's truly um, actualized. Uh, on the daily chart so i know it's this is already kind of wonky as it is it's like so many little indicators here and, and there my support lines like horizontal support lines my indicator support lines. so i understand it can kind of get a little convoluted here even with this diagonal you know or support line and stuff like that but at the end of the day um a key a key point going back to uh my assessment on the tsi daily is this line in the sand right here 22 um 22, 000. 22.2 to be exact now not gonna lie this does look like a bear flag um on the daily perspective uh which is a little concerning um so if we were to see a candle close below 20.8k i would expect more downside and i don't think it would stop at the 382 i think frankly we could probably see prices come down to the 19.3 uh from the daily perspective so i'm keeping my eyes on the daily support line of 20.8k so i'm going to turn this green and i'm going to turn this red so i wanted to talk zones right so theoretically speaking we do have this zone to play with we do have 6.7 percent to play with now this could be range bound and eventually go to the downside why downside and not upside well we printed so as you can see here and i just wanted to for clarification and i i don't i do not like being biased bear honestly you know i like seeing my bags pumped to the upside but i gotta be real i gotta be real with i gotta like live in reality uh frankly so i'm going to show you this is a 12 hour so i should go back to the daily it'll be more accurate on the daily so starting from this low here this was oh my god we have no idea if price is going to continue pumping to the downside or not right and it did continue falling and guess what we did have multiple daily candle closes above this this line right here which was the line in the sand okay so we had the support line let me shrink this because it's too much i'll delete these later but i just want i just want to give you context so we had the first initial low because here we had not one we had two candles confirm a higher low with the bullish engulfing candle right after which is this big boy right here okay so as you can see we had a higher low here 
price pumped all the way down to the downside, even wicked below it. But at the end of the day, another bullish engulfing candle after a bearish candle, which is right here. An ever so slightly higher low. Okay. Right. I'm going to continue doing this just for context. I'm not trying to belittle anyone's intelligence here. But as you can see, we did have this trend for a long time. Uh, and, you know, price continued to pump. And then we had like a pretty substantial reversal. And guess what? We had um, a higher low. And it even continued on. It, and we had a higher low here. We had a higher low here, even. But once this bearish, huge bearish engulfing candle came in, we actually have our first lower low in quite a long time. This is danger zone stuff, okay? So I'm going to actually delete. There you go. Um, yeah, there you go. That's fine. So we have our first ever, first ever lower high here. So p price could theoretically pump all the way up to this zone here and reverse. So basically we could literally see a 13% pump, but we could still print a lower high. So what I'm keeping my eye on is an actual pivot. I want to see where the pivot begins. And I, I take pride in finding pivots, okay? I don't get them exactly, you know, to the dollar, but I, I like to take pride in finding pivots and, and where they are in the trend. And now this line, this green line, is no longer support. It is resistance. We lost it, ladies and gentlemen. We lost this line of support, and it, you know, it's just the law of balance, right? Yin yang, like once what was resistance is now support. It happens all the time uh, in situations like this where you back test a previous resistance, you you successfully bounce off of it, you can constitute as a support. So it can work to the bull's favor. In this case, the bears have completely just, um, you know, wrecked uh, the, the bull trend. Now, it's not to say that, you know, it's over and we're going to zero, but you just got to keep in mind that, yeah, we had two months, a little over two months of bullish price action where you could have just bought, you know, spot at anywhere in time here and you would be in profit. And, and that's exactly what traders are doing. They're taking profits. Short termers are taking profits. Obviously, this was a key line that everybody in their mother who does technical analysis was watching, hence why the bearish engulfing candle was so epic. Um, but yeah, going back to the daily indicators, I, I was stuck on the TSI for a bit, but yeah, um, let me go to the RSI, which is the next one. Okay, we are in the bearish control zone. Uh, so the slow moving average is now been entering the bearish control zone. So we could theoretically still see a rejection here. So price can come up and ultimately get rejected and create lower lows. So we, we cannot forget that that is a possibility. Now, conversely, this could just cross above and, you know, gets back into the neutral zone, consolidates, and then resets and does another pump. That is also a possibility. But given that what has happened uh, in regards to the bearish engulfing candle uh, a couple days ago, um, you have to have a bearish bias. Okay, so let me go to the t uh, TMA. Also, uh, the TMA here, um, it's dumped, right? But it's initially crossed the slow moving average on the daily. Usually what happens uh, when this crosses, there is like a relief rally to the upside to back test it once it breaks at a support to resistance and then it just kind of continues to the downside. So that's where my base case is. I do, I do expect this rally, um, you know, a 3% rally or whatever is still possible in my opinion. Uh, to then ultimately kind of see some consolidation and it, you know, we'll see what happens after that. But the key levels to watch, frankly, um, I know there's so many freaking lines here. I'm going to delete some stuff. Um, yeah, just so you can actually figure out what I'm talking about. And I like to use dailies as pretty substantial um, situations. So this was more so the TSI indicator right here. Um, but theoretically, you can even go one step higher. You can go to like, you know, a higher low instance, the nearest higher low uh, in previous instance right here. 
and consider that as resistance as well. Um, I think that would be a little bit more accurate because it is a daily candle. The TSI is a little bit more fluid. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just a line in the sand to keep your, your eye on. Um, but ultimately, uh, right here is I would consider this more so like a point of control. And I would see this as true resistance. Because uh, this candle right here, this, this uh, bullish engulfing candle right here, is an interesting indicator. Uh, because if you zoom in, you actually see it, it wicked down near to that particular zone. So what that tells me is that traders did actually see this as support, and it kind of gave uh, buyers, bulls, validation to try to continue and push this trend up, and they were successful in doing so. Um, but they were met with staunch resistance later on within the overall move, which was, you know, 5% pump. But uh, yeah, 24.6 was a key resistance where you saw multiple wicks and you just couldn't get a daily close up above it. Anyway, um, what I'm trying to say is that true resistance, in my opinion, is at 22.619.58 roughly. Um, we do have a point of control here. So if, if this point of control is regained, we could probably see prices come back up to as high as like, you know, 24 point. 23.5 basically um yeah so we do have this like ultimate zone here where um i could definitely see some turbulence in this particular zone um but yeah if this particular yellow line right here this horizontal is back tested as support i would expect a pump to the upside for continuation but regardless of what happens i do see this vertical line as resistance now so if tagged, I would see shorts come in and I would see just, you know, the price immediately fall from my perspective. Uh, until this is regained, I can't, I can't be bullish for the time being. I'm, I'm literally more so preparing like, okay, well, we have this line of support right here. Will this eventually get tagged? You know, it's a downward sloping line, but it's support nonetheless. But yeah, if 22.8 roughly gets lost, I'm expecting lower, lower prices, you know, to like maybe... Maybe even like 18,000 or something like that. Um, yeah, well, we'll see. Uh, but as long as price is above 18.952, um, we we can, ex you know, this could potentially be a double bottom situation. You know, price could come all the way down here. You know, price could do something like this and come down. But as long as it prints above the daily candle close, above 18.9, then we would have a double bottom instance that's actually more bullish than you know incremental rises like this uh, this is where tr true bases are formed but anyway uh, now the double bottom is still in play um, a lower bottom is still in play as well but if a lower bottom happens i would look for some form of divergence and um yeah, we do kind of have a setup for some form of divergence. We had one here, and, you know, after this bullish divergence on the daily, we, we had two months of pumpage, right? So you can't scoff at these daily bullish divergences, but there is an attempt at, there could be a potential attempt at getting another one. Uh, so that's interesting for me because, uh, really quick, uh, going back to the market cipher indicator, if this, um, you know, uh, momentum wave actually prints something like this we would then have some form you know of a trend to play with right here so that would be really fun now what would even be better in the short term it'd be painful we would see a lower low from this point right if we would see a lower low from 18.9 where price is actually lower than this low that would validate a strong bullish divergence and i mean super strong bullish divergence another one okay so yeah i mean it would be painful to see my assets fall another 20 percent in value or whatever but if i knew that this divergence would clear and actually val you know it would validate a bullish divergence i wouldn't even be mad long term because that would just solidify this zone that we've been in for two months as an actual true bottom um but yeah, that's hardcore speculation on the daily perspective. I'm going to move on. I've been kind of, uh, uh, yeah, I've been a little, 
I've been here a little too long. I want to go more so intraday. I think this was is more interesting, in my opinion, uh, as a as a trader. Okay, so now the Heikinashi Micro Cipher indicator. We are still thick in the red. Okay, now we are seeing an attempt at creating a lower uh, high instance. Um, but keep in mind it's very thick in the red and there is volatility there is volatility to be had still um now if for example on the intraday this hill there this wave if you will is, is something like this it just rolls over and it's lower than the previous hill that's very very bearish okay if you see something like this on the daily um that that is an indication of a bear trend but conversely if um this wave prints higher uh, than the previous wave then it wouldn't be bearish uh, so this is kind of a key indicator that I'm kind of watching on the four hour um, who's actually in charge at this time personally I think it's the bears who are still in charge but you know there is leeway for the bulls to make uh, some movements um, and the four hour is displaying that okay the TSI indicator is actually bullish bias the slow moving average is green and the faster moving average is starting to point to the zero line so if i do see a successful zero line cross up that would indicate a bullish pump to the upside now uh, from a bullish perspective i love the fact that these heikinashi candles are printing above the nine exponential moving average so there is hope for the bulls still if you can get a successful 921 EMA cross, then this pump could actually surpass the 22.2 mark, and I would expect a pump more so to the top side of, say, 22.6, which is a pretty juicy pump. It's at 5.16, so it's not bad at all. Okay, so, yeah, but as long as, um, yeah, and also my um, my movement tracker here are give me all green check marks, so it's not bad from the intraday perspective. Okay, so I'm going to go to the four hour here. Um, MACD is actually showing a resurgence of a pumpage, which is great. Uh, also, the MACDs point to the upside. So from, I would say, a day or two, maybe three, we could actually see some positive price action. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Okay, so the TSI, as long as price is above. Now, this is actually an important line here at 21.182. I would, average, I would probably average that out to 21.2. So as long as price is above 21.2, I gotta be, I gotta be uh, bullish. So that's cool. All right, no, okay, that's pretty good. The daily looks a little bit more, you know, glim. Um, what is that? Is that an even a word? Grim, <laughs> glim. <laughs> I don't even know if that's a word, but I, I was gonna say the word grim. The daily looks a little more grim, but the intraday stuff a little looks a little bit more better because uh, we did already see the carnage play out. We're now seeing a relief rally, so um, that that's nice. But you got to keep aware that there is topside resistances, so please be cautious in your in your entries. Entries are pivotal in regards to the health of your moves if you intend to do any all right so the slow moving average right here on the MACD X is actually pointed to the upside that's actually very bullish in my opinion on the four hour price is actually trying to leave the bear, uh, bearish control zone uh, how it is with the RSI if you see the fast moving RSI cross above the 50 that's actually a very good sign to open up a fresh long in my opinion not financial advice um, people do love cro when they see the 50 cross and that's why there are fake outs in this zone so you have to have tight stops or um, very long stop tight stops with high leverage low um, uh, loose stops with low leverage that's kind of like how I like to operate not financial advice but if you see the RSI cross above the 50 uh, and sustain itself like you see the slow moving average actually cross the 50 with the fast moving RSI it's just you know more indicative of a positive result okay so interesting enough we did get a significant oversold zone here at 13 like this is this is egregiously oversold I haven't seen stuff like this in a while since may uh, in june now in august yeah we saw essentially a capitulation event so now at this point we are seeing a cross above the slow moving average and uh yeah we have to kind of uh, respect that all right so now let me go to the one hour here um let me go to the one hour okay this is a little bit more 
uh, wonky and stuff like that, but I have to show you guys. Okay, because it's Chop City. Okay, we are getting oversold. Um, we are getting a sell signal, and this is what I'm talking about, choppiness, right? So really, I would, I would pay more attention to like four hour support and resistance zones, daily support and resistance zones, and kind of like play off that. So uh, money flow doesn't look too great. Honestly, we are getting um, yeah, we are getting a downward slope, which that to me that indicates weakness, and it also confirms my bearish bias here. Um, we did get a, we did get a 50. I I personally like the 21 50 EMA crosses, which is right here. Let me uh, mark that. Basically, these two teal colors. That's actually pretty bullish. Um, a back test, and as long as the 9 EMA holds support after this cross, uh, it's bullish. Also, we don't really see true resistance up until 22k. Interesting. Um, now, we do have pretty strong resistance here at 21.799, uh, so that's something to be aware of. Uh, okay, so let me go to the TSI. What does the TSI say? So TSI. We had some choppy, choppy, choppiness, but we are still pointing to the upside and we're no near the, the oversold zone. So that's interesting. Um, what I do like from bullish perspective is we are seeing a higher low instance right here and a reversion back to uh, bullish because the slow moving average turned from red to um, well, teal in my instance. Um, green for you maybe. Okay, so let me go to the one hour indicators here. Uh, now we're seeing some dichotomy. Con uh, conversely, how the daily was looking, the hourly is looking the exact opposite, where we have we have bullish momentum subsiding on the histograms, and the MACD indicators here are actually above the zero line. Now they are kind of tightening together, so there could be a sell signal in the near future. So. Uh, that's something to, to keep in mind. But, you know, there could also be a bounce off of the slow moving MACD here to, to continue on. Um, so, uh, yeah, at this time, uh, from an hourly perspective, I would like to see um, a little bit more, not gonna lie. I wanna see uh, essentially higher lows. And where would that be? Higher low right here so as long as price is above there i'd feel better um, here as well basically sustainability above the 50 and 21 ema um, that's something i'd be more so concerned for actually this was a resistance line here above these candles so basically as long as price is able to sustain uh, support Right here if this basically zone at 21.4 21.35 holds as support then we can kind of um, you know continue actually when I do something rather interesting I haven't really been looking at the charts much today um, I've been kind of working a little bit I have a new project that I'm working on with the client so I've been busy with stuff like that but yeah, as far as this is concerned, we could have a potential W pattern. Um, I, I do have to keep this in mind right here. We have uh, lows, higher lows, and then a pretty solid base or top side, sorry, here. So if I see an hourly candle close above basically 21.563, an hourly candle close, we can do actually a measured move. So that measured move would look something like this. Me, uh, probably right here. Yeah, move. Well, actually, it's a little crooked. There you go. I don't like the extension. There you go. And boop, right there. So basically, oh wow, and it aligns up perfectly with 22.2. .2. Would you look at that? Would you look at that, ladies and gentlemen? Okay, so, um, yeah, if. Basically, this is a line in the sand. Um, you know, if price loses 21.356, you know, you can expect bearishness all the way down to probably 20.8. Um, if the bulls are able to take 21.565, 
and backtest to support, I'm pretty much expecting 22.2 roughly. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I've had a great time here. I'm kind of skipping other indicators, but I'm pretty. this was pretty uh, good information from my perspective. Yeah, I just want to say thank you so much if you're still here listening. I appreciate you very much. And uh, yeah, if you haven't already, please uh, like and uh, subscribe and uh, share with your friends if you think this information is valuable. Also, um, let me know what you think in regards to the price. I know this is a very choppy zone, so there could be a lot of like mixed feelings, mixed um, perspectives and everything like that. But I would really appreciate your, um, you know, your point of view you know my point of view but yeah if you feel the need to refute it or uh you know give me some comments in regards to <laughs> price action let me know but uh, anyway have a great rest of the day thank you very much and uh, bye bye